why we're here. I know him particularly through listening to him on his NPR radio program on the weekend. <coughs> some of his books. Some of you may know him from watching him on television, PBS program. But we all know him, and we know of his great travel writing, and I'm sure he's really provided some great assistance to many of us here as we plan for our travel abroad. Uh, but we also know that he's been very engaged in public policy issues. I'm delighted that I'm going to be speaking with him on a panel in Edmonds on November 16th on drug policy reforms. But he enjoys getting involved in a lot of different policy issues, which he's going to talk about today, as he's also showing us an abbreviated travel. There's line. something called a cafe fix. I was just at one in Frankfurt also. And it's a heroin maintenance clinic. And here, junkies can go to get medical counseling and make sure they get safe stuff injected properly with counseling and care and an ability to get themselves back on the, their feet. A lot of tourists travel through Europe and they see all the junkies on the street and they just think, God, these Europeans, they're so liberal, they got junkies everywhere. Drugs are running rampant here. And I gotta remind them, no, they consume less per capita than we do. They've just got junkies on the street instead of dead or in jail. Senate Bill 5615 would reclassify marijuana possession from a misdemeanor to a civil infraction. We're talking about marijuana possession of under 40 grams of marijuana. And as such, it would not only save the state taxpayers a lot of money, we're talking about $17 million in court costs, law enforcement, and so forth. It would also save the uh, really the lives of a lot of people who perhaps when they were youthful um, had a misdemeanor on their record that can affect college attendance, being able to get financial aid, being able to get positions later on in their lives. And I think it makes a lot more sense to treat marijuana possession as a health issue, not as a criminal issue. And that's what we're trying to do with this legislation. 13 states already have this in law, and most of them for almost two decades. So they learned early on that it's cost savings, good thing, it's something that can be more likely to get help for citizens who have some issues with regard to drugs. And I think it also makes more sense in terms of when parents and teachers and law enforcement people talk about drug use as being bad, that especially young people know that we're not talking about marijuana here, which is very different than hard crime, hard drugs. Now the, the very important part of this though is that we do not include minors in this. It would still be unlawful for minors to possess marijuana as well as any other drugs, just as it is for them to use cigarettes as well as for them to drink under a certain age. So that would not change. But we want to make sure that our system makes sense, that we're smart with drugs, that we're not being foolish about how we penalize drug possession. I, I don't think it makes any sense to make a crime out of something that probably millions of people in this country are engaged in and who are not criminals. Uh, we need to put our resources, limited as they are, in our cities, our counties, our towns, and at the state level for better use. There's a lot more that police and sheriffs can be working on than trying to go after people who have a very small amount of marijuana in their possession and are not drug dealers, are not engaged in dealing drugs. So that's why we're supporting this legislation and I am very pleased that we had bipartisan support for getting it reported out of the Senate Judiciary Committee and would like to see it go all the way through to the governor's desk in 2010. And why was Rick Steves here today? Rick Steves, the travel writer, uh, was in Olympia today speaking before legislators as well as many Senate and House staff to talk about travel, but particularly travel as a political act. He was really fascinating as he talked about our ethnocentrism, how we view other cultures when we don't know firsthand about people's lives in those other 
countries that have different cultures. Within that, he also talks specifically about drug policy in other countries as compared to the state of Washington and, of course, the United States.